Intro No man is lost. Even if we wander aimless in this plain. For we find ourselves in rooms, collections of cubic spaces, adventure frameworks. Each picture leads down another path. A symbol, button, sign, roads diverging and converging through the image into the reality of meaning. No picture or lack thereof is greater than any other. No written letter is greater than the space around it, and yet it is more important. The subjectivity of meaning collected by creatures of conscious creativity, pushed into plasticine ideas, built into flesh from clay, animated by names. We all stand, wobbling, wavering in the current of the middle, the base of the bulb, that squidgy half-and-half bit that allows for elephants and Dairy Lee Dunkers and sewing machines and Levi jeans and centipedes. I dare you. I dare you to join yourself, hold your own tiny fingers, that little five, and be dragged along laughing, stumbling over yourself, beside yourself, with joy. Look yourself in the eye and laugh at yourself, with yourself, for yourself. Welcome to you, you say, to yourself. Now, step down from your cloud and trust that the light will not give way beneath. After all, what is there to give way to? The void holds you, cradles you, because it cannot do anything but. When you float in nothing, there is nowhere for you to fall, and if there is nowhere to fall, then there must be somewhere to be. Take a step. You can feel There is something. You are somewhere. The white void shimmers as you have taken a step. As you lift your foot to take another, the void forms beneath the past to build a floor. For if a step has been taken, there must have been something to have been stepped on. You write with your feet newly found discovering the matter of history as you walk, and with joy the ex-void begins to sing. How pretty and how complex things seem to have become now. Just you wait till the others come along. Thank God for me and other people. Like squash courts are rooms where the people are walls and the ideas are balls. Some rooms have people on the walls, square or rectangle people with faces made of paint. These people don't talk or walk or sing, but like all people, they glow with the spirit of their character and share through being their perspective. We build and build and build, extruding things into other things, squeezing, pushing one type of thing into another type of thing, through a hole, or a tube, or a wire, or a vacuum, or just air, but always pushing, squeezing. The heat death of the universe will definitely happen after you die. But who knows what other scary equilibrium lies waiting for us, scheduled any minute soon. In the end, everything will dance. There will be no singing, or painting, or poetry, or books, or films, or internet videos, or board games, or even bedtime stories. For there will be no bedtimes. In the end, there will be some characters, and they will sit in another room, and they will be together, and they will wonder if 
This is what was always meant to be. And they will remember everything they were supposed to forget. And they will sit. And if they are brave, they will ask each other questions. And they will open their mouths and they will stand. And if they are braver still, they will dance. And they will dance with the walls that shimmer as though they were made from the blood of stars. Dead end. You've always been a big, flashy person. The life of the party. You bring people together, say all your friends. You're tucked away now. Your secrets are laid bare and no one is here to see them. You're the only one that can laugh at them now. They are manifest, anthropomorphized, inanimate object, not objects. You can touch them, play with them, rub your fingers against their sweet textures. These pictures look familiar, like you've seen them somewhere around here before. And yet, you can't seem to actually feel anything. Where did the lightness of heart go? You're supposed to be getting on. Getting on. Getting on what? At least you got somewhere. Achieved something. You've reached the end of the line. You walked along here for ages. And now what? A dead end that looks exactly the same as where you began. What a joke. Carpet. If I were you, I'd take your socks off. Like wet grass on a hot day, this floor is a good base for the toes. A sensory treat for the feet. Wriggle them around. Wriggle, wriggle. Open the blue trunk. You open the blue trunk. Egg, cutlery, old cold tea, paper, water, glass smashes and splashes over that lovely carpet. That's going to take a while to clean up. Where do they keep the cleaning stuff around here? I'm sure there's a broom in one of these rooms. Inside the trunk, there is an old leather jacket with the letters B, U, F, T, Y painted on the back in white emulsion. You shut the lid of the trunk. The jacket stinks of mould. Yellow envelope. You step on the chair to reach up to the top of the wall. The grey lump groans as the chair wobbles beneath you. The envelope is empty. So is the wall where it used to be. You try to reattach it, but it was stuck on with old blue tack, which seems to have lost its stick. Oh well. The bookshelf. You lean down to investigate the bookshelf. There are several books. Titles include Life, a User's Manual by Georges Perec, My Big Toe by Thomas Campbell, Marabou Stork Nightmares by Irvin Welsh, A Big Collins World Atlas, the Reader's Digest, How to Do Just About Anything. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I Heart New York by Lindsay Kelk. The Entire Works of Shakespeare. And Even Cowgirls Get the Blues by Tom Robbins. Something's Missing. The Plant. It's a shame you broke that jug earlier. The plant looks dry. It could do with a little water. You lean down and it whispers something in your ear. <coughs> you recoil. That's disgusting. Investigate the hoops. In the bottom left corner of the room, there is a pile of green and white striped fabric. You hold it up to the light. The badge on it reads, The Celtic Football Club, 1888. There are a few holes in it, and it is a bit wet. It smells familiar and yet strange. 
You don't remember what this means. Hang in there, baby. Hang in there, baby. Chess. You sit on the floor. In front of you is a painting of two people playing chess. The image is unclear. Like telephone, the game of chess became a photo and a memory became a painting, became a painting, became a painting. Do you remember where you started? Were you you, though, back then? Lamp. Off. On. If a tree falls. In the top left corner of the yellow wall, there is a small painting of some trees. For a brief moment, you think about someone close to your heart and far from your life. The firebird asks you, If a tree falls in the forest, and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? But really we might ask, is the tree the one that makes it, or is it the one that hears the ground? The mirror. You've been walking in a straight line for an infinitely long amount of time. The mirror asks you, if you reach a wall that is infinitely wide, Would you stop walking, sit down and cry? Because after all this time, all you've been doing is walking towards a wall. The big light. The light turns to face you. It wobbles. It's laughing at you. Left or right. The light swings both ways. Three women. You feel something here. The women in the ceiling look down on you. They are you. Your mothers and sisters and brothers and fathers inside them has been every atom of the universe, iterations of tubes and eggs and holes within one another, without one another, and always encompassing, holding You can eat these women whole, like the void might chomp on you while you dream. These women are eaten easily, but eaten. They wrap around everything from the inside, like when you look up at the sky and realise that if you mapped the cosmos, you could cut a tiny piece of the earth out for the whole edge of it. All that wonderful stuff, just a tasty little snack. The house. That's the outside, isn't it? It looks so small from here. Ball. You kick the ball. It's really heavy and doesn't budge. You've stubbed your toe. Ouch. Whoever put that there must be a total buzzkill. I bet they smell like poo. Broom. Oh, here's the broom. You should remember which room that's in for next time you spill something. The Owl and the Pussycat There sits on the floor in front of you a very large, illustrated children's copy of The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear. It reads to you. The Owl and the Pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea-green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five-pound note. The owl looked up to the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy, oh, pussy, my love, what a beautiful pussy you are, you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? They sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there, in a wood, a piggywig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, his nose, with a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring, said the piggy? I will. So they took it away 
and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon, and, hand in hand, on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon, the moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. Press the big red button. You press the big red button. Nothing happens. It's just a painting. What did you expect? Green door. That looks scary. I don't want to go through yet. Let's go somewhere else first. Back the way you came, maybe? Let's try that again. Room B00011. Things are getting complicated. The rooms look more familiar now. Each space a reimagination, a translation, an interpretation. You think about the images, all of those shapes and forms and things, foreground and backdrop, buildings, rooms, fruit and bodies, the clouds of the unseen skies. Oh, to be one of those, a cloud, to be both the figure and the ground. Paintings sit like that on walls, framing action and reality internally and externally, accompanying life and remembering it. The map is the territory. The map. You notice there is a map on the wall. It seems to be a map of the room. The clock. They say that even a stopped clock is right twice a day. This clock is missing its hands. You can still hear it, though, ticking out the seconds, minutes, hours, days. You wonder about the time. It knows, but it's lost its interface and speaks only in whispers, the soft language of an analogue machine, mining information that cannot be understood, only felt. This is a free clock. It keeps secrets. The lamp. Off. On. The hallway. You walk into the hallway, quickly so as not to disturb the pink shape. It doesn't seem to notice you. You look at your reflection. You were never very good at remembering what you look like. You think you look pretty good considering the circumstances. You give yourself a little wink. The kitchen. Oh no. The washing machine seems to be flooding. I guess that's someone else's problem. The water stinks. You look behind you. You can't remember which room you came from. The hallway again. You look down the hallway which runs before you. The walls seem to converge, morphing into their reflections over a single pixel of bright white light, beckoning. Come forward, adventurer. Seek out what the light surrounds. The white light. You enter the light. A small man in a green suit greets you, smiling. Here's your pot of gold. You made it to the end of the rainbow, friend. Don't spend it all at once. 